Thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, so good afternoon, my friends. My name is Juan, and I am a software engineer big data at Lovu. And today is a really, really special day, I'll be honest with you. And the reason is because first, it is actually my first time speaking in a conference. So I'm really happy and excited to be here. And second, of course, because I'll be talking about machine learning and anti-span. So let's begin. This is the agenda for today. First, I'll be talking about span at Lovu. Who are the spammer? How do they behave? Followed by this, I'll show how do we detect them, and how do we block them, and how do we fight the spammers. And lastly, I'll show some insights, some numbers, some graphs regarding how the system is performing. However, before starting, what is Lovu? And Lovu is a dating app, meaning that we have a bunch of pretty people that are flirting with each other, hunting for each other, and most importantly, trying to find that sweet love that we all like and adore. But yeah, what is spam? Well, I like to define spam as the unauthorized use of a system or a platform to send, display, or just to communicate unsolicited and disrupting content that usually comes on, on the way of advertisement. Now, the goal of this advertisement is, of course, to generate some kind of revenues, views, or any sort of profit. But this sucks, okay? This is really, really bad because we are a dating app, so we have people trying to find other real users who want to spend time with them. And these stupid spammers, they are getting on the way of that because they're using genuine images in their profiles. They use really good description to lure our users into believing that they are real. I mean, for example, just imagine that it's Friday night and you are on Netflix doing nothing in your house, just swiping, 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 and you get this really good match. And then you start talking with the match about, boom, spammer. You're going to get really sad, you know, and it has a lot of negative effects. For example, it damages the image of the product because I want people to think of Lovu as this amazing place to find love and adventures. Also, it distracts our customer support because the people, they call customer support like, hey, there's spammers here and so on. And then support, they have to take care of the ticket. They send emails to everyone. So it takes time. And you know what they say, time equals money. And lastly, it makes our users sad. So they quit the platform and they, I'll be the one who's going to get sad. Okay, but how does the spammer behave? And here I have this asterisk because most of the spammers, they are actually bots. Otherwise, it will be kind of easy to catch them. And I like to define our spammers into one of two categories. We have the active spammers and the passive one. And the goal of the active spammer is to really, really try to engage into conversation with you. And for doing this, they use a bunch of pretty pictures of artists, Instagram, and you guys have no idea how many Brad Pitt and Scarlett Johansson I have seen on the app. And when you are in the conversation, then boom, they spam you with an ad or blackmail, or even prostitution services. And I mean, I'm sure for some of them it's quite cool, but that's something we don't allow in the app. On the other hand, we have the passive spammer. And this one, they just write a really simple advertisement in their status, and then they vote, 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 vote. So when you get the vote notification, you go to the profile, and you are going to see the message. And this is an example of a spammer profile. Okay, the picture is not loading, it's really weird, but just imagine there's a French girl here called Roxanne, 24, French, but whoa, it's fake. This is not Ro Roxanne, and Jesus Lord. And, but here, you can see the about me, and there's a bunch of text, and it basically says that recently I broke up with my boyfriend, I'm looking for a friend with benefit to have some fun, so if you would like to have sex on camera, please email me at this address. Come on, this is spam. Who is going to do this? Like, yo, just write me here for half sex. Yeah, whatever. But how do we clean the garbage? What are we doing to get rid of all these spammers? Well, say hello to anti-spam. Now, anti-spam is our big system for detecting and controlling spammers. And it is divided into multiple com components. And we like to call anti-spam an event-based system because it depends on all the events that are processed in the application. For example, every time you vote for one person, or every time you send a message, or every time you block someone, those are events. Now, every time you perform an event, it goes to our back end, which is there on top, which is written in Golang, Node, and PHP. And then the back end is going to emit, it's going to push the content of these events into Kafka, which functions as our backbone or the heart of anti-span. On the other hand, 
Kafka is also facilitates the communication between our components because first, it provides the data that we need, of course, and second, it lets them communicate between each other. So if component A wants to know something about component B, instead of asking directly, it's going to be like, yo, Kafka, do you have uh, this information about this user? Sure, bro, I have it. And then Kafka is going to provide it by keeping the state of the component. But now, you see here that Antispan is based on different components, however, just five of them that are actually used to fight the spammers. And of these five, two of them are non-machine learning based and the rest are machine learning based. And while well, today I'm going to be focusing on the machine learning ones, I'll give a really, really quick recap of what are the non-machine learning models. First, we have the rule-based system. This is basically a bunch of lists and rules that if they are violated by the user, then the user is going to get punished. For example, we have the IP blacklist. If you come from IPX, then you are out. Or we have the terms blacklist. If you write this random word on the text, like bad names and such, then punish. And then we also have the community. And the community is the responsible of keeping track of how many reports a profile receives in a short amount of time. For example, if I receive 15 user reports in one hour, I'm sure that I'm doing something really, really wrong. So we're going to detect that, and what's going to happen? Punish. Yeah, we like to punish people here. But come on, let's move to the good ones, the machine learning base. And here I'll be talking about three of them. Activity base, report clustering, and entity reputation. So, boop, activity based model. This one follows a super beside learning approach, and we use a random forest of around 800 trees, give it, give it or take. And it's really simple, you know, it classifies a user into either a spammer, a bad person, or a hammer, a good person. And the model uses over 30 features that are related to how the user behaves. In other words, we do not care of who you are, we care about what you do. And some of the values of these features are the absolute number of execution of a certain event or the proportion of an event with respect to other events. This is an example of my really huge training set. God, so big. And here we have user A, B, C, D. And we can see on the first column, we have the event called message blocked. And for user A, the value is 0.16, meaning that of all the user of all the events that this user has performed, 16% of them has been message blocked. But on the last column, we have the event today logged in. And Today logged in is the absolute number of time that the user has logged in in the last X hours. And this is how the system works. I'm gonna tell you a little story here. And as with everything with big data, it starts with Hadoop. In Hadoop, we keep our historical data, all our events, and then here we execute a bunch of Spark jobs to calculate the features and why Spark and why so many. Well, because we are calculated around very features, and some of them are related to the distance of the user. So just imagine that if the person moved 50 times during one day. So we need to take that into consideration. So this is really, really, really heavy load for the system. Then after we have our data, our features, we move to R. And in R, we prototype the model, we select feature, we remove feature, we do outlier, we remove the outlier, we calculate, you know, everything, just prototyping the whole system. And after we decide that this model is good enough, like this is good. Then we move to our activity-based model. We deploy the system into production. However, however, this is in R, and this is in Golang. So we need some kind of intermediate step to convert this from A to B. And so we have this kind of model generation that is going to take our R model and is going to convert that into Go code. And the responsible for that is here, that guy. So any question, go to him. And of course, we have Kafka, because Kafka is going to keep updating us of all, this, of all the updates of the user. So every time we receive a new update, then we're going to trigger a new prediction. Then, the next one, the report clustering. And unlike the first one, the report clustering features a unsupervised learning approach, and it uses a, some kind of homemade online version of k-means. And maybe some of you here know what is k-means, but the main difference between the traditional k-means and ours is that it's online. We're always learning on the go. So we learn, we predict. We learn, we predict. It's like dancing, you know, ta ta ta. So then, after we have that, uh, after we have the system, the 
mm, the purpose of it is to detect and to combat spam wave. But how do we do this? Well, we create dynamic rules for the rule system that I mentioned previously, and these rules are based on content that, are, that is being reported by the user. A bit confusing, right? But yeah. And here, once again, another story, but this time the story does not start with a tube. This time it starts with a report. So let's say that you look like a spammer. And I'm running to you, and then you write me, hey, sexy, please visit me at hotsteamysex.com. I'll be like, bro, no, you are a spammer, so I'm going to report you, boom. After I report you, then I'm going to create, I'm going to trigger something called the report created event. And attached to this report created event, we will have the last message sent by the person that was reported. So I'm going to receive this new event with this string. The next step is going to convert this string into a numerical vector. And for this, we use the feature hashing, or hashing TF, whatever you want to call it. And then we cluster. We cluster this into our system. And once we know to which cluster it belongs, we calculate the average TF IDF of this content here. And for those of you who are not so clear, TF IDF stands for Turn Frequency, Invert Document Frequency. And it's basically a score that te tells you how important a turn is to a document that belongs to a set of document. And in this case, my one document is one cluster, and my corpus, my set of documents, is going to be the whole system. But what happened now? Up to this stage, I have a bunch of TF-IDF of all the content of the cluster. And I want to know if this TF-IDF, 9.8, if it is an anomaly, if it is an outlier. So for this, I created or yeah, my own equation, which I like to call Juan, just like me. And Juan stands for Juan's unsupervised anomaly number. And this score is uses all the TF-IDF and it's going to tell me if this number is indeed an outlier. So if it is an outlier, if my TF-IDF is greater than one, then this content is going to be converted into a rule for the rule system. So the next time someone funny decides to write this again, we're going to know that, whoa, this looks really similar to this other message that I have in the rule system. So what's going to happen? Punish. Next one, the entity reputation. And this one is quite similar to the first one because it also follows a super precise learning approach. It uses a random forest. And I can't tell you how many trees we have because uh, this system is still kind of on development. And it classifies the user into a spammer, bad person, or hammer, good person. But here, here, instead of looking at how the person behaves, we have something called the entities. And we call the entities, or we define an entity as the resources or system that a user uses to communicate to the platform. For example, IP, from which IP do you come from? Device, which device are you using? Is it Android, is it web, is it iPhone? And the country, from which country you are participating in the app. And then, for each one of these entities, for each one, we have a set of counters that we call the scores. For example, the users. How many users come from IP X? The punishment, how many punishments have, have been received in country Y, and the reports. But we even go further th than that, and using a combination of these scores, we calculate ratios. And we call all these ratios the, the reputation. And this is what we're going to use for predict. And an example of one of the ratios is the ratio of punishment, meaning that, for example, of all the people that come from IP 1, 2, 3, 4, how many of them? have been punished. Of all the people that are using Android, what is the ratio of reports? So if we take all these scores and we add them up, in some sense, it's going to be like the likelihood of how spammy an entity is. Because our assumption is that if there is some kind of spam wave or some kind of attack, all the spammers are going to come from the same place. So next time we receive an event from IP, whatever, and device whatever, then we're going to know like, hmm, this is fishy, I think you're a spammer. So what's going to happen? Punishment. But now, oh, come on. But now, insights. How is the system performing? How does it look? Well, here we have some graph, and this one is called the reported users across month. And on my white axis, I have the percentage from daily active user. In other words, all the users that are active in during one day. And on the X one, I have all the days since the beginning of the year until a couple of days ago. And all those pretty colors, they are countries, Germany, France, and so on. But the really cool thing here is that 
First, the average value is around the same, 0 0.03, which is a really, really, really good number. But during March, I think the spammers, they got a bit cocky or something like that, and they, they decided to increase their activity. And that's why we see that the trend is kind of increasing, whoop, whoop, whoop. However, unfortunately for them, we had planned to deploy our new activity-based model on April, and that's then why everything is going down, down, down. The next one, quite similar to the first one. Once again, here we have the percentage from daily active user, and here all the days is the beginning of the year. And the really cool thing here in the blue line is that we see the huge spike in April, because that's when we deployed the new activity-based model. And after that, the performance was really, really good. We were really surprised, and a bunch of um, a bunch of people, they got blocked. And then now everything is going a bit, it's kind of sta uh, stabilizing. Then we have the entity reputation. We don't have enough data about it because he's the new kid in town, so we're still trying to get familiar with it. And on the last, so on the last place, we have the dynamic rules or the report glossary, which is being always the wicked one, but it's really do what it's supposed to do. Then the spammers by country. And here we can see that around 60% of them belong to France, Germany, or USA. And this is really, really, really good because we know who they are. You know, we are like pals, you know, like, yo, Spammer, what's up? So we, in some sense, like, we are kind of controlling them because we know from where they come from. I mean, for example, if one day suddenly we decide we see a bunch of Spammers from country X, then we're going to be like, whoa, what's going on here? So this is really, really nice. And the last one, and this one is completely different from the others. Is this one is more machine learning based. It's an histogram with the confidence value of the activity-based model. Because when our activity-based model, it says that you are spammer or hammer, instead of doing that, actually, it gives me the confidence value, how confident I am that you are a spammer. So we use that, that score and some kind of post-processing just to make sure that you are really a spammer, just to make the final decision. But the really cool thing here is that either the value is like, I'm not so sure, or, or I'm really, really, really sure. So I'm guessing that we are doing quite of the right thing. So that's it, my friends. Uh, really? OK, yeah, 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 whatever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 any question, feel free to spam me, haha, at any of our Twitter. And yeah, say not to spam, because spam sucks, yeah. Spam sucks, indeed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any questions? Jesus, OK. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> about the machine learning part, how do you handle skew data? And skew data. What is your uh, false positive? The false positive? Oh, mm. I mean, we have false positive. Uh, really, I'm not sure if I can say name, but we have around like two of them per hour, you know, for example. And how do we handle them? Well, when, okay, I didn't explain, but when I say punish, we do not block the person, we ask for a verification either by using SMS verification or picture. And when we are really sure that you are a spammer, then we ask you for a picture. So the person has to take one picture, one selfie, haha, and then we verify it if the person is indeed the real user, otherwise not. So that's how we handle them. To be honest, there are some cases maybe where the person is like, I don't want to verify myself and blah. But you know, this, yeah, that's something that happens, so. Oh, we're still oh, the data. Ah, the data. Ah. I mean, uh, but what, I what is exactly the question? How do I handle that? Uh, there are way much less spammers. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, of, of course, I mean. Forest, you do yeah, so I mean. OK, sorry, yeah, continue. So, <laughs> uh, for everyone else, uh, basically, spammers are less than the normal yeah, yeah, users. Course, yeah. So we have a skew in our uh, yeah, training yeah. data set. Yeah. So you do use class weighting, or do you uh, Yeah. Manufacture. I mean, like, like we use the, the classes, but the thing is, during training, we actually, our main focus is to reduce the number of false positives. So for this, we kind of tweak a lot the training set just to make sure that we are not, that we're going to avoid that. So we kind of balance, we, we try to balance the amount of spammers and hammers because otherwise the, the, the model is going to know, it's going to be very smart about the hammers, but know about the spammers. So we kind of try to kind of balance them at least like, like 2080, some, something like that, so. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for your talk. Um, Thank you. Mm, I, was, I was curious, like, you have a lot of text there. Uh, do you think, like, in incorporating some kind of NLP features would really help you a lot? 
Yeah, can you please repeat? <laughs> like uh, incorporating some kind of NLP features, like not just look into the popularity of a city re- or like where you have the ratio. Yeah. I mean like because for a cold start thing it is it might be a problem like the first spammer and you have no spam report you would say yeah. like yeah it's very good thumbs up but you mean for the entity one yes like for a text so kind of looking into like how does a spam structure looks like yeah. what are the words which are kind of kind of blacklisted i mean be? yeah for the entity one like we don't do any sort of nlp if that is the question we basically we just use like i say here all the re- reputation scores but since yeah, like the entities are mostly this. So we don't really we d- we don't really take into consideration what the person is actually saying. The in the only instance where we kind of know what when we take into consideration the content of the message is when we use the report clustering because we received the last message. But other that than that we haven't explored that way so much in deep. Uh first of all, you have a very cool style of presenting. Cool. Thank right. you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Two questions, I guess. First question, so you have Hadoop, you have stuff on HTFS, then you use Spark, then you put it into R, then you put that into Go. Yeah. Um, so it already feels like you're using a bunch of language. How do you communicate the Spark to R bit? OK, oh. good question, yeah. So do you use Sparkly R or? Our, yeah, no, no. So we have this Spark here, and then after we finish our work in Spark, we actually we just dump, we just load all the data into Impala. And then in R, we read from Impala, and then yeah. we load all the data, yeah. So it's not so automated, and that's mostly because of my decision, because I kind of like to get my hands dirty in the process and select features and so on. Like, kind of like to play around. So if I do it automatically, it's going to be like, pre- press button, go to sleep, and ta-da. And nah, that sucks. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> one uh, one uh, other question is, I can imagine one of the hard parts here is uh, sort of getting the ground truth right. Because if some people file a report, this guy's actually spamming, that's a good signal. Definitely mm-hmm. a spammer, and you have certainty in your label. Yeah. It might be that someone's actually spamming, but no one has reported it yet. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like what's, what's sort of your trade-off there? That's, that's also, I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's indeed one issue. Like, we have someone that is spammer and we do not know them, but, I mean, yeah, in some cases, we just have to close our eyes and you could, you could save this time. But, but I mean, if, even if the person is not reported and, and that, if the person keeps moving, if the person keeps doing event, eventually, the first model is going to cache them because we know the activity of the users. So I- if the person is never reported, then eventually, yeah, eventually. So we don't have time for more questions, but uh, feel oh. free to ping one after the talk. Yeah, spam so me. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys.